Father? And what if Jesus is His Son? And what if His Spirit is alive and moving in the world today? And what if He loves you? What if He loves you so much that He didn't give you a Q&A? What if He loves you so much that He decided to send His Son to be your Savior? And he's not going to force you to believe. He's going to let you decide. What if the tension inside of you is that real and that personal? What if you begin to pray? Lord, who are you? Because if there is a who are you, if there is a who to know, if there really is a Jesus, don't you want to know the answer to that question more than you want to know the answers to all the other questions in your life? If there really is a Jesus to know, don't you want to know? Don't you want to know that more than you want to know why your sister died when she was so young? Why your marriage blew up when you had done everything right? Why in the world you lost a job that you really loved? Why, why, why? Why all these theological things? Why all the other religions? Now as interesting as all that is, if there is a Jesus to know, isn't that the preeminent question? Because if he really is who he says he is, can you see that that becomes the context? for finding answers to all those other questions. Now I'm a guy, so I know what some of you guys are thinking. So let me just go ahead and say it. You're thinking, okay, okay, okay. If I'm on the way to Target, and there's this blinding light, and you know, all of a sudden, this, I can't see, but there's this voice that speaks to me, and I pull up on the curb, and I fall out on the sidewalk, and hear a voice, I could go with that. Yeah, I believe if that happened to me, I think I'd be into that. If that happened to you and you heard, I am Jesus who you are resisting, don't you think all of a sudden all your other questions and obstacles would kind of shrink? <laughs> well, yeah, if God did that, I'd be in. You know what you just admitted? This is important. Because what you're saying is there is a way around all of those other questions or obstacles that you've held up sometimes as maybe kind of a smokescreen to not deal with the God who really wants to deal with you. You know there's a way around. There is a potential Damascus Road experience for all of us. There's something that God could do or allow to happen that could get your attention really quick. There's something that could happen that you find yourself on your knees praying to the ceiling, God, I've never believed before, but if you don't do something, it's not going to happen. The potential is there for all of us. My point today is simply this. Why wait? Why not say now, in the safety and comfort of your wrinkle-free life, why don't you say, who are you, Lord? Because if there is a you to know, I don't want to miss that. If there is a you to know, then it's really more important than all this other stuff that I keep throwing out as an obstacle. Let me tell you what happened. Paul, same person, Paul later on wrote these words. This is pretty powerful. He said, one day, it's the same guy, one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He didn't say, someday every question will be answered and every obstacle will be removed and we'll all have a universal, oh. No, he said, you may never completely understand. Don't miss this and I'm done. You may never completely understand, but one day the whole world will be convinced. So I want to challenge you with this as we close. Would you just pray sometime today or tonight? So who are you, Lord? Because if there's anybody out there or anybody in here, that'd be important to know. And I'd rather know the answer to that question than all these other questions that have served as an obstacle to my connecting with my Heavenly Father. That's how adults generally come to faith in Jesus Christ. Because something happens that is so real, so personal, that all the other objections begin to shrink. And once you begin to embrace Jesus as your Savior, you'll get some answers. There'll be some questions that really don't matter anymore. And then there'll be some mysteries that you just carry with you to your grave. So I want to challenge you. If you've never once crossed the line of faith, would you at least begin to pray, Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Because if there is a you to be known, I'd rather know you than have answers to all these other questions. You know what? Let me do this. If you're here this morning and you're going, You know, I'm in. I'm there. I believe. I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. I want to close this message today with a prayer um, that's really similar to the one that I led uh, Gracie Galeotti in a couple Fridays ago. 
when she made Jesus the Lord and Savior of her life by sitting in our living room. It's a prayer that simply says, God, I believe. I believe that you're God. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he died on the cross for me personally. And today I want all of that to be applied to my life and to my sin. And if you've never made that decision, then I want to lead you in making a decision to express that to God. Now, this prayer doesn't make you a Christian. That's what I told Grace. I'm just going to give you some words to express your faith in Christ. Christianity is simply saying, I'm placing all of my trust and all of my weight in what Jesus did for me. And if there's never been a time that you've sealed the deal, I want to think for some of you, maybe this, this day is the day. This is an opportunity to express to God the fact that you're placing all of your faith in Christ as your Savior. So would you each just, just bow? And would you just, you can do it silently if you want to, but would you just pray with me for a minute? Would you just say, Heavenly Father, I believe that you are just that, my Heavenly Father. I believe that Jesus is your Son. And I believe He died on the cross for my sin. And in this moment, I'm placing all of my faith in His death on the cross as the payment for my sin. Receive me into your family, not because I've done anything to deserve it. Receive me in spite of what I've done. Receive me because of what Jesus did for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this amazing story. Thank you for taking the most unlikely candidate in the world and doing what only you can do. Father, I pray that you would just open that door for all of us. Because this story means that we're all potential candidates for your love and your grace and your mercy. And Father, I just pray that, that all of us, that, that each one of us would never forget that you came to make it as real and as personal as it can possibly be. And we are so grateful for that. Extremely grateful. In the name of Jesus. Amen.